How's it going everyone? Mitch here with the second part in the overview of Logic Plugins. And we're going to be starting out in the Distortion Plugins today. The first that I'm going to talk about is the Bit Crusher. It's a low resolution digital distortion effect. You can emulate early digital audio devices because you can create artificial aliasing of the original signal by dividing the sample rate and you can change the resolution of the input signal. This can create a lot of uh, early game sounds, 8-bit, 16-bit, stuff like that. And you can also use it in a lot of uh, genres of electronic. Mainly, I had a tutorial not too long ago about dubstep and using this to create almost a vocal-like effect on your wobbles, which I will definitely be putting in the links here to the right. And it also adds a lot of character. If I were to put distortion on a vocal track, I might think between the bit crusher and the overdrive, because those can add a lot of interesting overdrive effects to clean audio signals. Uh, clean vocal signals, to be exact. Next is the clip distortion. It's a non-linear random distortion. It adds warmth and bite like an overdriven tube, which is good, and it's a combination of filters and amplification that creates this non-linear distortion. The only problem with it is, is it creates some gaps in the frequency spectrum. Be careful for this exact reason. It's good because it adds this randomness and this overdriven tube sound but it creates gaps in the frequency spectrum and those gaps might be something that you want in your track so just be careful and wary when you are using this distortion next is going to be the uh, just the distortion plugin it's a lo-fi dirty distortion simulator it simulates distortion created by bipolar transistors these transistors are used a lot of the times in solid state amplifiers um, the bipolar transistors and FET transistors are used a lot. Um, this is just one type. And it's simple, but creates some unique sounds depending on the signal. Most of these plugins do depend on the signal. So I don't even know why I have that in there. Alright, so the next one is going to be the Distortion 2. It's a Hammond B3 organ distortion emulator. It, as you see from the picture, it has like a wooden sheen to the plugin. If you ever see a plugin with a wooden sheen, it's going to be associated with this Hammond B3 organ. All right? So I don't really ever use this distortion, but just a couple tidbits about it. There's three types of distortion, growl, bitey, and nasty. And then there's a built-in high pass filter, which you can see is the tone knob on the far right. All right? Next is going to be the overdrive. And like I said, there's going to be FET and then that bipolar transistor. This is going to be the FET distortion. This type of distortion is found in many solid state amplifiers and pedals. It creates a warmer distortion compared to the distortion plugin. I use it to, to add some grit to screaming vocals. Not just screaming vocals, if I wanted to add some distortion to a clean vocal signal, I might think about adding this overdrive and then like I've already said before, uh, the bit crusher. So play with those if you'd like. Next is going to be the phase distortion. It's a modulated delay distortion. It's a similar to a chorus and flanger, but instead of modulating with an LFO, it's modulated with a filtered version of itself. And this is what creates that phase distortion. It can be used to subtly add some bite to guitars. If we're going to be talking about guitars, Phase distortion, overdrive, and the normal distortion plugin are all viable options if you don't use distortion from the amp designer or pedal board. Next is going to be adaptive limiter. We're going to get out of the distortion plugins. This is going to be your standard peak limiter. It produces an effect like an analog amplifier being driven hard. And it's mainly used in mastering on the main output. If you do not know what a limiter is, it's basically a compressor with no ratio. Anything above a certain threshold is just going to be cut down to the original, to that threshold basically. All right? So that's what that adaptive limiter is going to do. And I find myself using the adaptive limiter more than the limiter, but I'll talk about that more when we get to the limiter plugin. Next is going to be the compressor. It's just your normal analog compressor emulator. There's six different types of circuits. These circuits change based on the signal that you're passing through it. So keep this in mind. A lot of people just stay with platinum and overlook this. But if you want to learn more about this, I do have a tutorial on that, which I will put a link to. The levels are dynamic by increasing low volumes and decreasing high volumes. Compressors are a dynamic plug-in. 
depending on the signal going through, is going to change what the output is. That's just obvious, right? Plugins like the EQ are not dynamic. They're going to be static. The signal pass it doesn't matter the signal passing through, it's going to still degrade some frequencies depending on how your EQ is going to be set up. So just know compressors are going to be dynamic. Stuff like EQ is static. It can be used in parallel compression. I can also post a link to the parallel compression tutorial I have. Parallel compression can add a lot of body to your signal. And it's used a lot in, uh, I use it for guitars, vocals, um, drums, uh, drum kits, stuff like that. Compressors in general help to round out and tighten a track. All right? DSing, it's a frequency specific compressor. It's dynamic frequency range compression. It's dynamic just like the compressor, unlike the EQ, which is like I've been talking about static. And it's used mainly to compress the higher vocal frequencies. The higher vocal frequencies where this is where the DSing comes from, the S's come in. They're going to you can just kinda compress those frequencies just a little bit so that they're not so harsh in your ears. And I find myself using this all the time on almost every single vocal track that I have. Next is going to be the enveloper. It's a transient designer. I've actually had a tutorial on this very, very recently. Go check that out. I'll post a link here. Uh, you can uh, change the attack and release separately from each other. And this is good for <coughs> percussion because percussion is basically a transient in itself. Every hit on percussion can be modeled as a single transient. So you can increase the sharpness of a snare drum, soften the sharpness of a snare drum, um, work with the amount of tail on that snare drum. And there are just so many things that you can do. And it's I use it a lot when working with percussion in general. Okay, And you can use it to add snap to a bass drum or synth bass. Uh, next is going to be the expander. It's going to be the opposite of a compressor. It increases the dynamic range above the threshold instead of decreasing it like the compressor. And it's used to drop the noise floor out of a signal. If I do have a tutorial on the expander, you should probably check out if you want to learn how to drop that noise floor. But what is a noise floor? If you have a microphone hooked up to your computer and have it just recording, you can, t you can hear, if you turn up that signal, a lot of the background noise, a lot of hum from the circuit in the microphone, in the interface, Anything and any all the circuits that get that signal into the computer could add that buzz to that signal. And what this does is it kind of compresses parts of your signal that are below the threshold and it can drop that noise floor out, that buzzing and humming. So it's very good for that. Next is going to be the limiter, which is yet another standard peak limiter. Uh, limiter versus peak limiter, or uh, adaptive limiter, I mean. Which one to use? I find myself using the adaptive limiter more than the limiter, um, but the difference is the limiter acts more like a compression compressor than the adaptive limiter because it has a soft knee, as you can see. Now, the soft knee is almost, it's not going to be, there's no option to it, it's just on or off, and it's kind of like the ratio on a compressor. Uh, so you can get m closer to a compressor with the limiter than the adaptive limiter. It's used primarily in mastering just like the adaptive limiter and it's made so that if you have zero gain input, zero decibel output level, it will do nothing to a normalized signal. What is a normalized signal? If you want to normalize a signal, it will scan the entire audio file for the, the largest peak um, in that signal. And it's going to increase the whole, it's going to add gain to the whole signal until that highest peak is right at the top. So that it's just before clipping. So that's what it's going to do. It's going to keep that normalized signal just, it's going to be a transparent plugin with zero gain, zero decibel output. Next is going to be the multipressor. It's an independent frequency band compression. So on each channel, you're going to have a compressor if you look at it one, two, three, and four. You're going to have compression on each of these bands. Not only do you have compression, but you have an expander on each of these channels. So you can have, if you hear more buzz in one of these channels than the others, you can have a larger threshold on your expander to get rid of that hum. And then you don't have to manipulate the other channels. 
which is very, very cool. And it's mainly used in mastering because of the high compression ratios. You can get a higher compression ratio with this, so you can achieve a higher volume when you have a limiter increased after it. And this is the basic definition of a master multipressor, and then an, a limiter afterwards. All right, the next is the noise gate. It's gonna be a soft signal reduction. It's gonna be similar to an expander. A limiter is to an, a compressor, as a noise gate is to an expander. Soft sounds below a threshold are completely cut off. There's gonna be no ratio associated with the compression on those low frequencies. You can work with the attack, release, and hold, and it's yet another way to drop that noise floor out of your track. Next is going to be the silver compressor. It's a simplified version of the compressor. Silver compressor and silver gate are both simplified versions of their counterparts, basically. All right, and it's good if you're working, if you're just learning to use a compressor. But the problem is there's no gain plugin associated with the silver compressor at all. The problem with this is, is that it's not going to be a volume transparent plugin. So you're going to have to add a gain plugin after the silver compressor. So my question is, why not just use a regular compressor? Just learn how to use it. Compression and EQ, I think, are the most, the two most important parts in mixing. So just use the compressor, learn how to use it. You'll thank me later. Okay. Next is the silver gate. Again, simplified version of the noise gate. It's advantageous again if you are uh, learning to use a noise gate. It doesn't have a filter, hysteresis, and look ahead. Again, I would probably just use the noise gate instead of a silver gate. So everyone, that's going to conclude the second part to my plugin overview tutorials. Uh, be looking out for that next one. Thanks, everyone.